Hello, my friends. Welcome back to MTD CNC. I take a breath because have you ever heard one of those stories where it just kind of pulls on your heartstrings that you you want to share with the world? You, you want the voice to be so loud for multiple reasons. Well, there's multiple reasons I'm sitting with Robert today and sitting with Extended today, as you can see. Um, I'm going to let Robert tell his story. The, the growth of a company that was purchased with his wife in 2013, the fact that he was a machinist since the 80s, the fact that he is 10th generation in this beautiful area of Canada. But again, I'm going to let Robert tell most of this story, and I hope I ask all the right questions to give you guys the answers that you deserve because this story for me is really one of those heartwarming stories. So Robert, thank you so much for being here, and I'm looking forward to sharing this story with the world. Thank you so much for the great introduction. And uh, yeah, so me and my wife purchased this business in 2013. It was an existing business that I'd worked at for most of my career. Uh, she had worked at for the last couple of years before we ended up purchasing it from the original owners. Um, my family has lived in Saskatchewan, like you said, for around 10 generations, right? And uh, it's it's pretty amazing and how connected we are. It's uh, it's a big province, but it's small population, right? And uh, we really enjoy it here. Uh, we enjoy having a company and to build on it. Uh, when we purchased the company, it wasn't doing very well. It had been in uh, losses probably for about eight years in a row when we got the opportunity to buy it. Uh, it was very difficult to talk bank into lending you money on a company that <laughs> lost money that many years in a row, but we did. Uh, we talked them into buying it. Uh, when me and the wife did actually purchase it and we're starting to up, we uh, changed the name to Extended Hydraulics and Machine. Uh, a lot of people just refer to us as Extended because we're so much beyond hydraulic cylinders now. But uh, we purchased it and we sat down and uh, trying to figure out a way to get back. And Catherine uh, and I talked quite in depth about that. And she said, why don't we draw on your history in Saskatchewan and, and, and do employment for Indigenous people, right? And everybody's always talking about Saskatchewan being rich in resources. And to us, the richest resource here in Saskatchewan is the people, right? And for generations, mostly been ignored and left out of the economic fabric of the country. And uh, we wanted to try and change that. So we focused on apprenticeship and training for Indigenous youth. And um, we always thought it was going to be our way of giving back. But what we found over the years is we've got probably one of the most hardest working, most dedicated staff in the industry that love coming to work every day because we gave opportunities to people that didn't necessarily have them any other way, right? And uh, I know for myself, my life probably would have took a lot different turn over the years had I not been just in the right place at the right time, given the right opportunity and ended up where I am today. And, and uh, it's always a surprise to me where I am, you know, and, and so I want to do that for other people. And, and um, we've got a great staff here and we love it. And uh, we, we're about 50% Indigenous employment. Um, when we started the business, we didn't talk about that a lot. That was just something we did as our internal compass and our morals on how to run a business, right? And we didn't talk about it a lot. Um, today, it's a become a very popular thing with a, a lot of the companies that we deal with that they want Indigenous content and Indigenous employment. And we're sitting here at 50% of our staff or more is Indigenous. The company's owned by myself, which is a Métis, so it's an Indigenous-owned company. I'm very proud of my heritage and my history. And, and we, right from day one, we focused on quality delivery. And uh, we've got our ISO certification was one of the first things we did. Uh, we became ISNet registered for safety. Safety is very important to us. We want everybody to go home happy and healthy at the end of their shift every day, right? And uh, so we're ISNet registered. We recently became TSASC certified, which is a, a, a pressure uh, vessel welding certificate or certification uh, that's very prominent here in the prairies. Um, so we became certified in that. Um, when Nutrien, or they were called PCS at the time, came out with their Indigenous playbook probably about eight, nine years ago, um, we didn't know that they were working on that. They didn't know we were Indigenous. We were probably one of their largest hydraulic cylinder suppliers when that came out just before the merger between PCS and Nutrien. Um, we phoned up Nutrien and said, you know we're an Indigenous company, don't you? And they said, no. 
They had no idea, right? And, and, and that's something we're very proud of, is the fact that we don't have to rely on the fact that we want work because we're in an indigenous company. We want work because we do build the best product for the best price availability. And uh, the quality is number one. The deliveries are always on time. That's our focus, right? The fact that we're an indigenous-owned company and we have indigenous employees, that's ours. That's, that's ours, not something we rely on to get work, right? It's just our moral compass of what we want our business to be. Definitely something to be proud of. And I know in 2013, when you jumped into this business, that also came from pieces of your heart not wanting to see something closed down because you wanted to support the local area. Um, and I do want to get into, as you mentioned, most people knew it as extended, uh, hydraulics and machine, but only extended because it's so much more than that. And I know we do a lot in the mining through Extended, and I want to get into that in j just a minute because I want the audience to know what Extended does and how you can support the industry as a whole for people who look who are looking to have quality work done by quality people. But I'd like to take another moment to kind of talk about uh, some of the struggles or hardships of the indigenous in this area, which is why there's a focal point of you saying, you know, we have more than 50%, the fact that we're indigenous owned, the, what, the reason you're doing training and, and education. Can we talk a little bit about that situation here in this part, even though it's a very rich land in Canada? Can we talk about that part for, me, for a minute? Yeah, um, I think it's kind of become to light just in the last few years with the finding of all the graves at the residential schools of how much mistreatment there was for indigenous people and a lot of it uh, there's nobody to blame there it's not it's just history right and it's just I don't think a lot of people realize how tough of time most indigenous people have had growing up and and through their lives and through their generations right and um, finding all these unmarked graves at these residential schools has really brought a light to oh my god we really did do some horrific things to indigenous people across Canada and, and the U.S., right? And, and it, it's misunderstanding of culture and trying, I'm, I'm quite sure the people that were doing the residential schools at the time thought they were doing the right thing, right? But as a result of what happened, Indigenous people ended up growing up in reserves and sh sheltered away from the economic fabric of our country instead of being involved in that and being a part of it. And as a result, there's a lot of unemployment. There's a lot of hardships and, and poor living conditions and, and just things that if people actually went to these communities and seen how Indigenous people were living in some of these northern communities, it, it, it's heartbreaking. And, and suicide rates are through the roof. And a lot of that is all because there's no opportunity for a future, right? Nobody can see past what today isn't giving them, right? And so it's very important for us to change that and, and get involved in how we can be a driver in that for economic reconciliation, right? Uh, a lot of people are talking about it. It's a key word now. Um, people are using it wrong. Uh, a lot of people are trying to use it to just promote themselves. And it, it's, it's all part of it, right? But uh, what we're trying to do here is create careers and opportunities for people that they can take much beyond uh, the fabric of extended hydraulics and machine. Um, I see so many training courses that go on and we train 100 people for an opportunity at two jobs for a heavy equipment operator. Well, that's just disheartening again, right? And what we want to do here is there's such a shortage of tradespeople and there's such a shortage of skilled workers in this country and there's, it's going to get worse as the years go on and, and things start to recover and, and um, we bring back more of the manufacturing from offshore to Canada and the U.S. It's going to be more important for tradesmen. So if we can take some uh, forgotten youth, bring them into our facility, and, and get them trained into Red Seal journeyman positions as machinists, millwrights, welders, you know, uh, that's something they can take with them for the rest of their life and go anywhere in the world. That being said, like you said, I'm 10 generations here. As you learn, Indigenous people, family is very important, community is very important, and where you're from is very important. That's why you, when most Indigenous people introduce themselves, they tell you exactly where they're from when they introduce you, right? And part of that is through history, we've always done that because that tells me, okay, where are you from? Do, 
Are we at war with each other? Are we friends? Are we trading partners, right? Where you're from and what community you're part of is a big part of indigenous culture, right? So that's why we make that announcement. But that's also says we like to stay where we are, right? And um, most indigenous people will very much stay in their community or close to their community. And um, so that's why when you're operating mines in a province like Saskatchewan, it's very important to have skilled, trained workers in those mines. And it's very hard to entice somebody to move to Rokenville, Saskatchewan, or you know, Saskatchewan period, if you're not from here, right? Like our weather is, is up there, right? So if you can train somebody who actually lives here and wants to live here, you've got an employee to work that mine site for life, right? So, th so that's where we feel the, the, the training can come in and we can get more people trained through our facility and get them up to Red Seal status so that you can go work at a mine or you can go work at one of these um, offshore sites or you can work at for an oil company or, you know, but without that Red Seal status, that opportunity is not there for you, right? And there's so few people willing to make that commitment to train people and, and we're willing to do that because it, we feel it's important. Thank you so much for conveying that message. I know I appreciate it. I'm sure the audience does as well.